All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepagus Show. I'm One Bar with Lepagus. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about five guys, five Minnesota Vikings that we'd love to see more of in Week 17 in a meaningless game. Well, maybe not for draft position. We'll be jockeying for position. Uh, yeah, some of these guys are more uh, – I was expecting to see more out of this year than others. A few um, – you know, a few are late additions that maybe you want to see what you got. But uh, some of these guys, I mean, I really thought we we're going to see their faces a little more this season than we did. And I think that's a great segue to our first guy. Yeah, and I, this this will have to do completely on the which way Zimmer is looking at this game. If he is looking at this as a game that he wants to win, he wants to go on a good note, then we probably won't see these guys. But if he's looking at it, let's see some youth. I think there's a chance we see some of these guys. First guy being Ole Udo. Yeah, he's the guy. I, I really thought this guy was going to compete, whether it was a guard or tackle spot. Um, he had that nice game last in the season finale last year against the Bears, played with some aggression. Maybe he was a little too aggressive. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe they just decided he is a tackle and he's not going to play guard because they got enough depth behind um, O'Neal and Reef to uh, – they don't need they didn't need to make Udo active because he was inactive, I think, the majority of the season. Maybe they don't see him as a guard, but God – how bad our guards have been uh, on both sides. Why not throw Udo out there just to see what he's got, if he has any kind of chance. Um, you put him over Dozier. I've seen enough of Dakota Dozier. Uh, I don't want to see any more of his, um, I guess you could call it play, but I really don't know what he's doing out there. Antics. We've seen enough of his antics. antics. What's our antics? Yeah, I can't think of anything more sad than trotting Dakota Dozier out there in a meaningless game and we have some young guys that can play but I'm guessing it'll probably happen we'll see we'll see but Udo, you know, you're right I think you know he played very good against the Bears uh week 17 last year I think the reason I love this guy is his name is Oli Oli and he's really seems like he's kind of rude and I love it when they call him Oli Rudo Oli Rudo, Oli Rudo. All right, that's our first guy. Next up, let's stay on the offensive line. Let's go to Mr. Kyle Hinton, seventh rounder, who is on the practice squad. Yeah, I mean, they can call him up. I think they have to do it by Saturday. Um, same thing with Oli Udo. Uh, just you look how bad the guards are. Why not try something different? But the Vikings, for whatever reason, they don't do it. Um, so while we all expect Dakota Dozier to be out there, why not see what Kyle Hinton has? Dominate the D2 level. Uh, for a big man, he can get down the field. He can pull. He can get outside. Pretty damn athletic. Um, and I don't care if he's a, almost the last pick in the draft. You see Mr. Elvin from the Giants, you know, he's having some a productive year. So there's no reason to think he can't be productive. You got nothing to lose. See what you got in Kyle Hinton. Give him, give him a taste. Give him a sniff of some live action. Wow. Mm. Yeah, out of all these guys, Kyle Hinton's the one I just really, really want to see through the most just because no no preseason we get to see see him one damn bit, and uh, everything at his college, his big thing coming out, he's just this athletic guy that uh, is very fun to watch. So I'd love to see Kyle Hinton. I love it so much. Yeah, and why the hell not? The only reason is that some of oh. these guys that don't have any chance of getting out there is they're probably so far from being ready, they don't want to throw them out there and just completely dash their any confidence they've built up. Well, one thing I didn't think about till just now, he will be facing John Penasini, and that might just be enough to ruin his confidence the rest of his career. Old Penasini, underrated. Pounding on him all game long. All right, next up, cornerback, new addition as of November, I believe, former third round selection out of the for the Dolphins, Cordray Tankersley. Yeah, um, I'm not as high on this one as you are, but why not see him? I've seen enough of Chris Jones uh, that I, to know that I don't want to see anymore, and I'd, I'd rather see anybody out there at this point. So let's see what Tankersley can do. He was a highly touted prospect, I think, that year he came out. He was in a lot of uh, late first-round mocks, too. So this guy was a, a guy many saw a lot of potential in. Why that hasn't worked out, I'm not sure. Uh, but I think he's got some good size. He's got some ability. Throw him out there. Again, our, our defense, really, it can't get worse I don't think it's statistically as possible to get worse than we are right now. Why not? See what there he can is. do. Chris Jones was giving about 20 yards of cushion to every receiver he was trying to cover. So uh, I, I think Tankersley could do just as good, if not yeah. a little bit better. Yeah, Tankersley, uh, third round pick, started 11 games as a rookie for the Dolphins. So he's got some experience, had a knee injury, I believe his second year, which cost him some serious time in the Dolphins. Ended up moving on from him, but you're right. He's got good size, 6'1", 199, and he's young. 
put him out there. Maybe he's a nice depth piece next year. Maybe he can round out the bottom of our depth chart. And uh, when you look at his college, when he was with Clemson, a little bit of a ball hockey. He had nine interceptions his last two years. They're mm. going to get some pretty damn good receivers. So uh, the main reason I really want to see him, he's just he's a former third-round pick, and he's young. Why not? Yeah, we all know. He was probably on your want list that year. He probably was. He's probably right at the top of that thing. All right, next up, I know you want to see this guy. I'll give you the, the honors. It's not that I don't want to see him. It's not that I want to see him. It's just I don't want to see Dan Bailey anymore. Uh, Taylor Bertolet, kicker. And not that I have any special insight into what he can do or his abilities or know anything about this guy. What I do know is Dan Bailey, uh, he's a mess right now. He just needs to be done kicking in football games. Uh, way too shaky. Confidence is shattered. Uh, he's not going to be the Vikings kicker next year. So we might as well, we're going to start auditioning guys. You might as well start with who you have right now. Taylor Bertolet, um, just see what he can do. Let him handle the kicking duties, kick off field goals. Um, if he does all right, then you let him compete with somebody else in the, in the um, preseason next year. Um, but at least, you know, whether, whether or not he's got a chance, you can at least scratch him off the list if he's not going to work. Uh, so why not give him kicking duties this Sunday against the Lions? Throw him in the ringer, as they say. Throw him in the ringer. That's what my grandma used to always tell me. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I mean, this guy has been cut by many, many teams. He's bounced around, but the Vikings have him on the roster, so they must they must have some intrigue there. Um, he's never actually kicked in an actual game. Uh, a lot of practice squads. He was in the AAF. I did look at his stats there. Not overly great, but it appears he's got a big old hog of a leg. He's had a three or four 50-yard-plus 50, 50 plus. Um, but a couple of third games too. I saw one for four, but I'm on board with this totally. Why not? If worst case scenario, he just goes out there and sucks. At least it adds some uh, good entertainment for Vikings fans in a game that doesn't matter. Let's see a new kicker. Hell yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, Taylor Bertolet scratch, look on the next guy, move on to the next guy. Move it on. All right. Next up six rounder in our uh, last draft class, Josh Metellus, the safety. Yeah. Um, Again, here's the thing. You know, Anthony Harris is going to start, uh, but if he's not out there not trying again, give him a short leash, pull him off the field, sit his ass down, try Josh Metello, see what the kid can do. Uh, he's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of spunk. I give him that. He's uh, kind of plays balls out. Doesn't have great coverage skills, but um, you know what? He can come up, support the run. That's our weakest area right now anyway. Uh, almost play him as a linebacker. You get creative with Metello, see what you got. Uh, again, I don't, you know, I don't think he's going to be a starter next year, but again, a depth piece. Maybe you actually, he plays well enough to think, hey, maybe we can go into the season next year with three safeties and not two. Yeah, and you, you hit it on the head. This is more looked at as can he add some good depth at safety? I think right now he's looked at pretty much as a special teamer, kind of a thumper. Um, put him out there. Let's see if he, what how good he does. Coming in next year, he can compete for that spot. And when we're talking about these guys, it's not, I don't think we're really expecting them to start the game and play the whole game. Maybe they come in in the second half, a la preseason style, like guys like Anthony Harris sit down, take a break, and bring these guys in. Even if we see glimpses of these guys, I think it's a win. Yeah, and a lot of this can depend on how the game goes. If this is a close game, going back and forth, and the Vikings truly want to win, the little starters will play longer. If they get up big, um, you know, pull Tom Brady and are up 40 to seven, start of the third quarter. And I think you start, you know, you even see Sean Mannion come in. Oh, my uh, God. What? Boone becomes the starting back. You may, you see all those kind of changes. So, um, yeah, I, I think game flow will determine a lot of these guys playing time. But, yeah, we want we got to see a little bit of these guys. You don't want to go into the next season not having many of these players not gotten a taste of what an NFL game is actually like. Yeah, we saw it last year with Oliudo Week 17. We got very, very excited. And then this year we never saw him again. Gives us false yeah. hope. Maybe he's just a week 17 specialty. Oh, damn it. Uh, final, final guy, a guy that Lopagus is not a fan of, K.J. Osborne. And when I say K.J. Osborne, I mean K.J. Osborne, the wide receiver, not K.J. Osborne, the returner. I don't ever want to see that again. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I think he might be inactive. We'll never see him again anyway. Um <laughs> It's the same kind of situation. You might as well see what he's got. Uh, throw him out there. Ataje Sharp was a flop. Um, you don't have Alexander Hollins anymore, so he's pretty much is your fifth receiving option. Um, supposedly he's fast. I haven't really seen it. I haven't seen him have any kind of escapability, any kind of moves. He's kind of catches the ball and runs into the guy who's going to tackle him. 
Got it. You don't like him. We got it. I would just be shocked if you show me anything at this point. I think he is the the highest rookie on the Vikings who will not be back next year is KJ Osborne. Very, very possible. Uh, Osborne, I don't, it's, it is concerning. He's not able to climb up this wide receiver depth chart that isn't overly great, but he, he was decent receiver at Miami, 146 receptions on a shitty offense that really didn't throw the ball much. So he, he must have something. I just want to see him maybe even get a snap at receiver. They don't even have to throw him the ball. You're just going to look at the roadie runs? Oh, hell yeah. There's some potential there. <laughs> what a route. Look at that footwork. And I'm glad you brought up Alexander Hollins. To be completely honest, we already did this video, and we had Hollins on this list. We did. And then right when we logged off, Brown snapped him up. We had to do it again. Yeah. yeah That's the commitment we have. So be sure to subscribe and like the videos. Yeah, you damn right. Uh, great move by the Browns, by the way. Hell yeah. I can't fancy believe it happened sooner. Fancy knows Hollins, knows what he's got there. He's got a hell of a player. And he'll probably be active. He'll probably have four catches for 36 yards. Well, they just lost to the Jets, so you could try anything. They had no receivers. No. All right. Those are our guys we want to see week 17. Let us know down in the comments who you want to see. Hell yeah. And here's something you probably didn't want to know, but now you will. Beer is more nutritious than bread.